Hello guys, this is Mtech here and today we'll be taking a look at Leia Ideas Idea 10 Quadcopter. As you may have already noticed, the Idea 10 draws inspiration from DJI Spark. However, the Idea 10 adds foldable arms. The Idea 10 is a foldable GPS quadcopter. It has a manually adjustable 1080p camera, which has a pretty nice wide angle lens. The onboard camera is able to save to a micro SD card, which can be slotted in the back of the camera. The quadcopter also has orientation lights, foldable props, and a battery that charges with micro USB. Here we have the Idea 10's remote control. It's a pretty commonly used remote control for GPS quadcopters. There are two fake antennas on the top, there are two joysticks for movement, and a bunch of labeled buttons for features. On the top there's buttons for record and speed, and on the opposite side there's a tray for your phone, which in my opinion is a little bit flimsy. Let's set up the Idea 10 for its flight. What we first want to do is hold down the power button for the quadcopter for a couple of seconds. After when the lights turn on, we can move on to the remote control. Now we're going to turn on the remote control with the switch in the middle and press the left button labeled GPS. Now the quadcopter is in calibration mode. You first want to turn the quadcopter counterclockwise until the remote control beeps. Then point the quadcopter upwards and turn clockwise. Once you hear another beep, Place the quadcopter on a flat surface and wait for all the lights to turn solid. This means that the quadcopter has connected to around 8 satellites and is now ready for flight. Let's unbox the Idea 10. The quadcopter doesn't come in a box and instead uses a hard fabric case. The case opens up with a zipper on the side. Inside of the case is a foam cutout for all the different parts. We first have the Idea 10 quadcopter which is neatly folded up. Next up we have the remote control which can transmit around 250 meters. However it's a good idea to keep in mind that the Wi-Fi live preview is only able to connect to the app up to 80 meters. On the top of the carrying case, there's a pouch with different parts. We have our charging cable, which is a standard micro USB, which plugs directly into the battery. You have spare props and a screwdriver for taking off and installing props. There's also rubber feet, which can be attached to the bottom of the quadcopter, which I've already installed. And finally, there are two instruction booklets, which go over features and setup for the quadcopter and app. Right, so let's take a closer look at the quadcopter. The arms fold out just like this. There's no particular order which you have to fold them out in. The arms are pretty stable and stay in place once folded out. On the top, there's a power button that you press and hold to turn it on. The top shell of the quadcopter has a rubberized texture to it, which is pretty nice in the hand. Once powered on, we can see the orientation lights, which are white in the front and red in the back. The lights can be seen from the bottom and sides and are pretty bright at night. However, in the daytime, it's a little bit hard to see. The props that are used with this quadcopter is the foldable type, which are pretty good for storage and also in my opinion are prone to less damage when crashed. In the back of the quadcopter we have the battery pack which slides out when pressed which is able to get around 15 minutes of flight. The nice part about this battery pack is that it uses a micro USB charging port for charging. This means you don't have to carry a separate charger for this battery. There's also a built in LED indicator which turns off once the battery is fully charged. In the front of the quadcopter, there's a manually adjustable camera, which has a wide angle lens and a resolution of 1080p. The camera can be manually adjusted up and down before flight. However, the camera is restricted with pointing down due to the ribbon cable in the back. And finally, there's a micro SD card slot for recording video, which is very useful since it doesn't rely on the Wi-Fi feed, which are pretty unstable for all quadcopters. All right, so let's take a look at the remote control. The two antennas on top are only for looks and don't actually have an antenna inside. In the front we have a button for GPS. This is for calibrating the sensors, which has to be done every time you turn the quadcopter back on. Below this button is the return to home feature, which allows the quadcopter to come back to its starting point. Next we have the headless mode, which allows the quadcopter to move in all directions 
based upon the direction it started in. You have your power switch with power on indicator, your auto take off and landing, and emergency stop which will cause the quadcopter to fall out of the sky. Moving on to the joysticks, the left side controls up and down and turn, while the right side controls forward back and side to side. On the side there's a button for speed control which it has three modes. You have your orbit mode which will cause the quadcopter to fly in a circle. You record video and photo mode. And finally on the bottom there's a phone holder which your phone can be placed in like this. I would recommend placing your phone in with the volume buttons facing away from the controller. Now let's take a look at the app. The quadcopter uses the app called LWFPV. The app connects to the quadcopter's Wi-Fi, which is labeled GPS. Now in the app, we have our live preview in the background, which you can see when the quadcopter is moved. Just like any other Wi-Fi quadcopter, there's some lag with the live preview. On the top bar, there's information such as speed, GPS coordinates, quadcopter battery life, signal strength, and settings. Below the bar is a map which you can see the quadcopter's position. On the side there's buttons for mode select, controls off and on, which brings up digital joysticks which are exactly the same as the remote control. Next we have auto takeoff and landing, and lock. On the right side there's an option for VR headsets, record to phone, take photo to phone, and finally gallery. 